Hey guys, so I figured I'd do a review of um, a comic a little while back, uh, several videos ago, I talked about another comic package that my uh, good friend Mount Vernon Kid uh, sent me. Uh, Chris, thank you once again, can't wait for the next package. Um, and yeah, so we're going to be talking about Clean Room. We're going to be talking about, I was going to review... Initially, I was going to review all three volumes because uh, um, all three volumes separately, but I decided yeah, I feel like this is going to be a consecutive enough story that I'm going to have to be like, all right, I'm going to have to review this all at once because trying to review all three all three comics uh, together would be a major problem because it's there's so much uh, that's so interconnected that I'd have to talk about it all at once, and even then, like I don't want to spoil stuff. So, minor spoilers here and there. I will say right out the gate, um, this is a great comic. The writer is Gail Simone, who is a prolific writer at DC, and she had done stuff at Marvel. Um, you guys would know her best for Birds of Prey. Like, literally, she wrote the book. She literally created Birds of Prey. And, of course, I know her best for uh, Secret Six. Uh, probably, I, I personally like Secret Six a little more than Birds of Prey, but that's just me. And Gale, uh, Gale was pretty dark to begin with in, uh, in Birds of Prey. I mean, yeah, Birds of Prey and, uh, Secret Six. But this goes to another level. Uh, yeah, Clean Room. So, let's talk a bit about Clean Room. <clears throat> so, what is Clean Room? So, this comic is set in a universe where this young girl, this young woman named Astrid Muller is in charge of, like, this basically cult-like society who has control over a lot of the world. And apparently, according to Chris, who's friends with Gail, with Gail Simone, is, like, a lot of her inspiration came from a lot of cults in Oregon, where she grew up. Because apparently there are, there are so many cults in Oregon. But also, there is another cult in here that, uh, that clearly had the most inspiration for her. Like... This is such an allegory for Scientology. It's like it real like it even set it's even in Florida. Like a lot of the comic is in Florida. Also, Chris, you ain't slick for sending me, you know, you, you know, guy out of Florida, a comic set in, uh, centered in Florida. You ain't slick. Uh <laughs> But yeah, also I would show you the interior art by uh John Davis Hunt and Quentin Winner, but yeah. Literally anything in this book would get me would get me to lose my channel. Like seriously, this is not for kids. This is another not for kids comic. I you know, I only recommend this for hardcore readers. So anyway, like I said, um go I know I'm jumping all over this, but uh, I'm trying uh, let's get back to it. So Astrid Muller is the secretive woman who has essentially made this cult-like society and this young woman named this young reporter named Chloe, whose husband was a member of that cult but committed suicide, um, is now investigating it. And she slowly discovers that Astrid is at war with some sort of being from beyond. Uh, from beyond, they're considered demons and angels, like all wrapped. It's like they're basically fighting like these eldritch nightmares um, in here. And I'm only like giving you a small example of the comic. I am only at best giving you, like, one-third of the story, because there is a lot in here that I don't want to spoil. Um, this is a very graphic comic, too. Like, there are some, there's some shit in here. Like I said, I could show you... Um, I could show you something from here, but at the same time, I can't, because literally every image in this comic... Because there is excessive amount of gore, nudity, violence. It's got the whole shebang. So I could show you... Uh, this will work. Yeah, this... Here's the... Uh, like, here's Astrid Muller herself. Um, like, this is probably the tamest panel I can show you. <laughs> Everything else, literally, it's... To give you an example, um, one, per one of these demons, as they're inside someone's body rips out their eyes, and then twists the face until it's upside down, and the teeth are shown through the eye holes. It's a lot worse than I'm describing it, I, I assure you. So, I just have a question for Gail Simone. Wow. 
you got issues, and I'm not just talking comic issues because I thought you were dark. I thought Gale was dark in Secret Six, um, but this goes to another goddamn level. Um, this is her first foray into horror comics, and I don't think she's done horror since. Like I, I actually just found this, and this was under the Vertigo line, which Vertigo's no more. And I found that this comic came out in 2015, very under the radar. Um, but downright scary. Like, it's it's so much body horror, and the artwork in here really adds to that. Like, there is so much to it in, like, forms of, like, body horror and, uh, just gore and violence. I, I, mm, there is a lot in here. There is a lot of pain and suffering in here. And it, you really do feel bad for, like, uh, the main character, Chloe Pierce, who is uh, our main protagonist. And you feel... And also, like, Astrid herself is a total monster in her own right, but you see, as you go through the other three volumes, like, why she's doing this. Like, why she's able... Uh, why she's doing the things she does and being so cold about... cold and cruel about it. The best way to describe her, she's kind of like an, a more, like, religious, religious version of of Amanda Waller. That's kind of what it is. It's more like, she only, Amanda Waller pretends to be God, Astrid Muller thoroughly believes that she is God. Like, or a God. That's the main, that's the big difference. So, um, if, if you're looking for cool quasi-horror dealing with cults and religion and some, some HP Lovecraft thrown in there, I recommend this. I really do recommend this. It's a, it's a trip. But be prepared. I was... Chris told me, like, hey, man, you need to be prepared for this comic. And I was like, ha sure. I can, I can take it. I could not take it sometimes. Like, I needed to put the book down a few points and be like, whew. Wow. <laughs> I was like, I need, I need a minute for some of the comic, uh, for some of the moments in here. I was like, I... Yeesh. Yes. Because you are... You think you're prepared for some of the shit that goes on in this comic? You're... You're not. You're generally not. I will say that right now. So, um, once again, Chris, I know you're watching this uh, review. Thank you, once again, from my bo the bottom of my heart for sending me this. This was downright gross and a uh, head trip, but I loved it all the same. This was a, you know, a great little, this was a great little story. Uh, total trip, uh, and I can't wait to see what you send next time around. Because I know De uh, Deceased is on the uh, next package, which I'm wondering when that's coming down uh, my end, my end neck of the woods. But I also know you showed me, like, some other stuff that is going to be sent along with it. And hopefully when I get it, I'll do, a like, a box, o like, a b unboxing. Because those are popular, still popular on YouTube, right? Right? Anyway. So once again, I hope you all enjoyed this. I'm Mr. Multiverse. And again, Chris, Mount Vernon Kid, thank you from the bottom of my heart for sending me this and everything else, man. You're, thank you so much, brother. But yeah, once again, I'm Mr. Multiverse, and I'll see you next time in the multiverse.